I'd also like to thank uh, um, Anita, Carl, and Erica and company um, just for, for putting such a wonderful thing together. It was a real privilege for me to write a chapter in a book. It's something I haven't ever done before. And uh, I had some great relationship uh, w cultivated with uh, Anita during the course of my MA here at Concordia in Art Education. And uh, Anita was particularly sensitive to some of the uh, issues that I was working on, uh, particularly around life history and whatnot. So um, I had written this piece for, uh, for her class. And she said, suggested that with a little more work, maybe it could go to publication, which, um, like I said, was a deep, deep honor and uh, a wonderful experience to uh, to honor Hanelore, who's the subject of this, uh, of this piece. And um, um, my background is uh, really in visual arts, but uh, in the last few years, I've taken a, a strong interest in life history and, uh, and documentary and animation. So uh, my first uh, foray was uh, talking about Hanelore's life. And uh, Hanelore was uh, sort of, I guess, a mother figure to me. Uh, she was someone who came into my life via uh, uh, my art career. She had supported me over some of the difficult times uh, as a painter and uh, took a deep interest in, in my work and as me as a person. So I was able to finally have the opportunity to gift her that back, which was this uh, project that we did together. It was called After the War with Hanelore, which was a, uh, a documentary on her life. So I'm going to read part of the article, uh, the chapter rather. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing given the uh, uh, time restriction. And I'm just going to kind of focus on, a, on the parts that I thought were most in, important. And uh, I also have some photos. And Anita's just going to tap through them. She kindly threw together a PowerPoint presentation for me. I came ill prepared. OK, fair enough. OK, so as a photographer and animator and documentary filmmaker, my research and artwork are based in life history and storytelling. I am interested in the blending of media and cultures and my pedagogic place in them. My current collaborative life history project with Handler Scheiber was initiated through her family photo album and led to the making of her life history into our documentary film After the War with Handler, or Berliner War Child's testimony from 1945 to 1989. Uh, as I look back on making this film, I consider how this experience was like a form of literary mitzvah what Hasbat Lut Chambers Lego described as braids that led to the understanding about the self and the other, and in the process generating insight about the world and the place, our place in it. Uh, Hanelor was born in Berlin in January 1945 and spent the earliest years coping with the city's treacherous post-war politics. She grew up to adulthood on the very front lines of the Cold War. I met Hanelor uh, in 1994 while she and her husband were living in Montreal years after both my parents passed away. At first, we established a client-artist relationship when she became interested in my paintings. Out of this personal friendship, which is now has elements resembling a familial relationship, I got to know Hanelore. I became interested in her childhood and adult years in Berlin after World War II. But thinking back, I realized my interest was something more. I was reclaiming my own loss through someone who had also overcome adversity and decided to see the future in a positive light. We both embarked on a remarkable journey that changed us forever. So that's Hannah Lohr and her, uh, her mother. So we can go to the next one. Uh, and this is her sort of extended family. And uh, I'll jump on here. Um, Maybe go to the next one, Anita, too. This is a uh, Hanlor beginning school, 19, 1951. Um, my intention with this documentary was to film Hanlor at specific site locations in Berlin and document her stories and memories in situ through a historical context. My goal was to catch her emotions surrounding her experience of growing up in post-war Berlin. What makes these seven vignettes special is that they are so personal. Returning home in 2006 for the first time since she immigrated to Canada 20 years earlier, Hanelore revisited family homes and youthful haunts, which, con uh, which conjured bittersweet stories of her youth along with the often tragic history of her city. From her family struggle through the Russian blockade and the Berlin airlift, through her school years in the partitioned city, to the very construction of the Berlin Wall itself. 
Hanelor gives us a touching first-hand testimony to the events that shaped her world and indeed the world at large. Uh, when, I just want to make a point here. I'm, I'm reading this and I realize it's on page 1989 and uh, that's the year the wall came down so uh, kind of appropriate that it fell on that page in the book. Far from embittered, she is a lively and insightful tour guide, temp uh, tempering wise reflection with unbridled joy and finally being home again. The outcome of this experience for Hanlor was just that. She did indeed move back to Germany. It was safe to say that hearing work that had been done inside Hanelor emotionally and spiritually while living in Canada and Mexico over the last 20 years. She told me that as a result of making this film, that she had overcome some of the darker memories of the Cold War and that Germany was no longer the place she left in the 1980s. Hanelor's photo album enabled us to collectively reconstruct her experience and memory to develop the research, collected data, and finally write the script for her own biography. Though Hanelor did not take the photographs in her life album, she did help create her own self-portrait with them, as well as an autobiographical life history, by collaborating and becoming a witness to her own life history, a truly remarkable gift to herself and the public. We'll try another photo. This is uh, one of the animations from the film. Um, I, uh, as most filmmakers do, go through the process of trying to raise enough money to tell your story I, uh, even with the support from the National Film Board, I uh, quickly ran out of budget to buy archival images and stock footage. So uh, my sister can attest to this three o'clock eureka, eureka moment. I woke up and jumped out of bed and said, I know, I know what I'll do with all the photos I can't acquire. I'll do animations. Have you ever done animation before? No, but I'll learn. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it's sort of one of those, uh, what do you say, the... Uh, available light theory, I guess some people call it in theater. So I uh, had a background in drawing and painting, so I essentially went to my editor and said, how do I do this? He said, just get a tripod, digital camera, off you go. And literally, I looked at one very important filmmaker, uh, uh, filmmaker and animator, uh, William Kentridge from South Africa. He was a big influence in this process. So we return. Uh, what resulted from this methodology was that Hanelor and I stumbled into a role that was not unlike mother and son. And uh, it was in that liminal in-between space where I tried to be of service to her story. I worked to enable her to tell her own story by braiding our narratives through message and theorizing with and through stories. I felt a deep link to this woman from another country, perhaps because I had lost my own mother when I was 13 to cancer. This project became an opportunity for me to honor a mother's figure, story, and the other side of the ocean, uh, from the other side of the ocean, and through the wall that separated east from west. These seven vignettes I shot of Hanelor's, Hanelor's life on location in Berlin were my way of reciprocating all that she has given me in our friendship. I also believe very strongly that oral histories like hers are invaluable records of the post-war period and the Cold War years in Berlin, the epicenter of World War II in Europe. So we can try maybe, there she is um, at her uh, school, Bertha von Zutner, and uh, two photos that were the entry points. You know, the photos were really the portal into her stories. I found this photo elicitation process really important because through the photos, it conjured up stronger and deeper memories versus just, you know, plunking someone in front of their former high school, as in the case here. So. Uh, we really, uh, in this photo here in particular, reenacted uh, a scene with her and her best friend. They basically stood there holding the photos, you know, 30 years, 40 years later, reenacting uh, uh, the photo that was taken uh, back in the 50s. Um, so I'll close here. In closing, I'm brought full circle to the opening scene of our film, which begins with Peter Eisenman's uh, controversial Holocaust memorial and my song Freiheit, which translates as freedom. To me, this place between the Brandenburg Gate and the Hitler's bunker is buried, is metaphor metaphorically a labyrinth bringing the viewer, viewer out to the dark past into the light of a promising future. I chose this location as it represents the last days of World War II and the beginning of the Cold War. What resonates with me now is the idea that Hamlor's life was a gift and that her will to overcome the darkness of these times may inspire us to imagine and create joy in the world. Her last statement in the film as we drove through Checkpoint Charlie was an affirmation of life and living. She says, I believe that it is possible to be of, sorry, to believe, 
be of two different cultures and live in peace. And I really, really hope and wish this for the world. This statement was an invitation and an opportunity to see how we can construct a bridge from our tragic memories by braiding our diverse, heartfelt life histories together, all in an effort to work towards a brighter future. Drawing from Edouard Galliano's The Story, Character, and the Crafting of Literary Message, return the reader to the conflicted sites of home and not home by remembering through the heart. This is still a truth I carry in my heart. It conjures up stuff. This is the truth I still carry in my heart from my collaboration with Hanelore Scheiber. I welcome you to explore Hanelore's life map. It is my hope that stories like hers will enable us to let go of the suffering and hate and darkness and finally to welcome the light of compassion to a city of great learning and possibility. My hope that this film might instill hope and love as well as peace and ultimately the contribution to the democratization of our planet by helping to end fear and war. I welcome you to one woman's journey doing this very thing. Thank you very much. I got through.